My demons have come out today I wake up to find them energized and antagonizing A voodoo type of thing Hey guys, welcome back to Red Death Studios. My name's Preston, I will be your host and your captain for this adventure through, what are we adventuring today? We are adventuring um, how to tackle the challenge that a lot of people have had with third party VSTs within Studio One Four Artist Edition. Um, we're, we're looking at how to set up Easy Drummer 2 with a multi output configuration. Okay, so now I, I know right now you guys are like, well, wait a minute, we're just looking at another YouTube, YouTube video, right? There's a gentleman here, shout out to Scott Legrand, right? Um, he was actually interested in understanding how I personally was able to set up the multi output configuration um, here within Studio One. Uh, the guy got, and I'm sorry to say this, Scott, but you got suckered into to buying the, the rewire, right? Because you didn't have to do that. Um, I don't think anyway, I could be wrong. But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through how me personally, Preston, goes through and sets up Easy Drummer in Studio One version four, Artist Edition. Okay? Awesome sauce. So without further ado, essentially what I'm going to do now is we'll just, you know, slide this over and we will look at our Studio One application. Now, before, <clears throat> before we get really started, man, this, these last couple of months have been epic. We, you know, with, with the exception of the virus and, you know, all that other crap that's happening right now, you know, um, it's pretty crappy out there, you know what I mean? But luckily here at, at Red Dead Studios, we've been... We can say family safe, everything's all good. You know what I mean? Um, but one thing, if you guys don't notice, the background of my joint is completely different than from the first video. Um, so my wife and I, we actually moved about two months ago. Um, the video, my first video for the channel that I created, we were all in boxes and you couldn't really tell because the studio obviously was the last thing that I touched. But um, so we moved about a couple of months ago. I'm in a completely new studio. Um, it's super big. You can't really see all the equipment over here in front of me, below me, you know, etc. Couch, wait, hold on, couch over here, whatever, um, you know, still around, etc. But um, we're pumped. And the, the first video that I published right now has about 2000 views, which guys like seriously, that's so freaking amazing. Thank you so much for, for taking the time and, you know, hanging out with my dumb ass and, <laughs> you know, listening to my, my crazy talk, I guess you could call it, right? Um, and, and the comments that I've received so far on the, the first video that I published were really cool. Um, thank you again. Like you have absolutely no idea how important that is. Um, you know, and not to, not to sound like a, a YouTube robot, but if you do enjoy the content, definitely hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know, all that good jazz down below. Um, cause that, that really does help out independent people like myself, you know, uh, and, and it helps more so from a confidence standpoint, I guess you could say. Right. Um, it's hard, man. I like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like doing this whole YouTube crap is tough, but anyway, so definitely Epic last couple of months, right? Couple, couple thousand views. <clears throat> um, and believe it or not, um, Mr. Scott, Scott Legrand was actually the, the first time in my YouTube history that I actually posted a comment on a video requesting another video. So this, this video right here is super duper Epic, right? Um, cause it's, I don't want to say like dedicated because that sounds kind of weird, but Scott, buddy, this one's, this one's for you. Okay. So as you can see, um, right here, basically I have a completely new instance of studio one open. Um, I've clicked on my mix button down here so that you can see the mixer over here on the left. And then if you notice, you click on the browse button and, and Scott specifically for you, again, if you notice down here, tune track, easy drummer is actually one of the plugins that are allowed from a third party perspective, right? So basically what I do is I'll just drag this over here, right? <clears throat> and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna instantiate a version of Easy Drummer 2, okay? Now, I was kind of thinking about going through a different or a couple of different um, EZX packages that I have, like the, the add-on packs, I guess you could say, for a lack of better terms. Um, so here, this is just the Easy Drummer 2 Modern default kit. 
right? <clears throat> and as you can see down here on the main output, everything is coming out through the main output. Now to Scott's point, obviously we don't, we don't want that, right? Because from a production perspective or, you know, from a mixing perspective or whatever, um, I, I think it's important that you have the ability to control each one of your eight to 16 tracks that you have with an easy drummer. If you want to treat them, um, sometimes your, your volumes and everything with an easy drummer are kind of too jacked up or maybe too low or whatever. You want to control them from your DAW. Maybe you want to add some plugins on the snare, maybe some reverb sends or whatever. You know what I mean? It's really tough to do that when everything is coming back at you in a, in a stereo channel. Okay. <clears throat> so again, pay close attention because we've already done, we'll say one click, right? Well, one click, two clicks to drag easy drum over here. Right. And the most important thing is here. All you have to do is just click on the easy drummer option. This is really funny. I, I know that Scott, he, he, in his comment, he's like, I've invented a couple of new curse words and everything like that. Um, you know, with the, the amount of time that he's tried to spend on, on figuring this out. So please don't take this as like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm talking crap or anything like that. It's just, <laughs> I went through the same stuff that you did and then came across a magical YouTube video that just made me feel like a complete freaking retard. No, no offense to, you know, anybody out there or whatever. I just felt like a complete dumbass. Um, as you notice right now, all of the, when you click on easy drummer two here in the option in the instruments section of the mixer, you'll notice that the drop down comes down. So you have actually 16 channels that you can take advantage of here, right? These are all auxiliary channels we could say, right? So your snare is on, let's say auxiliary channel three, for example, um, you can do each one of your individual toms, or you can just group all your toms together. I'll, I'll show you how we do this in a second. Um, but right now everything is coming out of easy one, right? And the easy one is basically directly linked to your, your stereo master fader, um, your output or your main main output. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to go over to your mixer, right? And remember this is complete all default crap right here. I'll, I'll walk through a couple of different scenarios, um, in a second with different easy X kits and stuff. Cause I personally enjoy, um, a couple of different kits, I guess you could say, um, versus the kind of the original stock one. Right. But, <clears throat> um, we're talking about artist edition studio, studio one, right? So yeah, it's complete. I, I didn't have enough money to go out and buy these easy X kits either, you know, for a while. So, um, let's start here. Okay. What we're going to do, notice how everything here from the output perspective on the, on the mixer is set to channel one. So we're going to select the first one and we're going to go out to multi-channel. Okay. So you select the little down arrow here next to the one and go out to multi-channel. And what's going to happen is you'll notice it goes one, two, right? And then it switches to four, five, six, seven, eight, et cetera, right? We're going to, we're going to switch this around a little bit. Okay. Um, we're going to go one, two, well, I guess we can leave it like that. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see what happens. So I personally like my hats on channel three, but whatever. And then sometimes your kicks and everything, it really all depends on which easy X kit you're using, but we'll just walk through factory kind of default crap here. Okay. So one through 14, right? We're missing track three. We're missing track eight and nine. It appears, et cetera, but it's not a big deal. So we're going to go easy down here in the, um, the outputs. We're going to go easy one, two, uh, we'll just click all of them up to up to like 14. I think I screwed up there. There we go. Right now, if we go back to drums and just hit the snare, notice how the snare is coming out of the snare channel here. Okay. And then you're also getting some additional room mics, some additional ambience over here on these, uh, on these other channels, right? So what we're going to do is go back to the mixer. So we make sure we know what the heck we did. All right. Um, what is this easy trimmer one? I think I can actually, well, we'll just avoid or ignore this first channel. It's not really a big deal. So anyways, here, we're just going to double click. I like to turn my caps on with my drums, kick, hit tab, snare, right? Hit tab. Um, here I am being a goof and hitting the caps button, um, hat, right? Um, we're going to go toms. Okay. We're going to go overhead. We're going to go ambient. Ambient is essentially a fancy word for, um, we'll say room mics. Okay. Compression reverb. Okay. We really don't have to do anything else because I, I personally don't use in, in this specific kit, I don't use one shots or shakers or whatever. Okay. So we've used essentially 
eight tracks. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go back and remove all the ones that we don't need. Boom, done. Okay. So let's say, for example, we go to um, our browser. Now, a lot of you or some of you or whatever might not have the libraries that I have. Um, these are all paid for, completely legit, whatever. Don't worry about it. Um, but let's say, for example, we go into, I don't know, Dark Matter, for example, um, 68120, 44120. What's the tempo we're at? We're at 120. Um, let's go with 68, I guess, 120. And you guys can see when I play this. that all of the drum sounds are actually coming out of their individual channels, like we had talked about, right? Let's try that again. Browser, we'll hit play. And that's it. It's legit that simple, right? So, you know, for right now, I mean, Scott, the the video is done you know what i mean like if you have any other questions or whatever um it's this little trick right here this little hidden option um and then also the configuration here within the mixer to make sure that you're routing your tracks out to the correct um you know uh auxiliary channels i guess you could say for lack of better no they're auxiliary channels um now if we want this is essentially you know the video is done right that's that's all you got to do you know you can see here boom snare See how it's clicking down there on the snare kick, clicking on the snake or on the click, excuse me. Um, we're, we're legit done. Okay. Now, if we want to go through and look at the different easy X expansion packs that I have, you know, we can, uh, we can do that. But I, I think honestly, I'm just going to keep the video nice and short. Um, Scott, specifically you and you know, everybody else in the, uh, everybody else out in the world, if you want me to do a review on, Dark Matter, Drums of Destruction, um, Metal Machine, Progressive, etc. right? Um, I've got a Dark Matter kit in here too, if I remember correctly. Not here, I know that I've got the Dark Matter browser. Oh, you know what I did? I bought the, um, not the Easy X per se, but the actual MIDI stuff behind it, so that's why we have that there. But if you guys want me to do a review really quick on you know this other stuff, uh, other Easy X um, extensions and you know expansions and all that good jazz, Type in the comments, man. Talk to Scott. You know, I, I might not be the fastest guy to respond, but I will most definitely respond, hopefully within a couple of weeks, um, Max. And, you know, definitely, most definitely appreciate the love. Um, appreciate the likes. Appreciate the kind comments and everything. You guys are awesome. And, you know, essentially the whole, like I've said before, you know, the whole purpose of this channel is for me to take, you know, the 10 to 12 years that I've been grinding for, you know, to, to, say, to say it that way trying to figure out how to do all this crap. You know, my, my purpose is I don't want you guys to have to take six to eight years or 10 years or whatever. You know, I'd rather you take, uh, 13 minutes, right. And figure out something that took me freaking two weeks. Right. So I just want to make things easy for you guys. You know what I mean? So, um, again, all the love is much appreciated. Right. And, um, you know, don't, uh, again, not to sound like a, an ad robot or whatever, but <clears throat> don't forget to like subscribe, hit the notification bell add some comments. Um, you know, if you want to see some other stuff regarding studio one, let me know. Um, if you want to see some stuff regarding logic, uh, logic pro X, that is my, my DAW of choice when it comes to mixing and mastering. Like I've said previously, I like to use studio one for artist version for tracking because it ensures like it limits me from a plugin perspective. Right. Um, so I really have to focus on the quality of the input, right? As they say, garbage in garbage out. So if the, the quality of the, the actual audio coming into the, into the DAW is crap, you know, a lot of people just mask it with a whole bunch of plugins and compressors and, you know, all these other things, whatever. Um, my, my method is make your shit sound good, make it sound tight. And if it sounds tight without all these crazy effects and stuff, when you, when you bring it over into logic, for example, or even here within studio one, if you don't have the artist version, um, Trust me, your, your songs and your mixes are going to sound a thousand times better, right? So that's what we're all about here at Red S Studios, right? Quality in, quality out. Um, and maybe later I'll explain to you why I started using uh, Studio One. If you guys are interested in the story as to why I switched from Logic to Studio One, uh, not intentionally, post in the comments below, man. I'll, I'll create another video and we'll talk about that for a little bit. 
because it is a hell of a story with Presonus and myself. But anyways, guys, lots of love. Stay safe in these crazy times that we've never seen before. Um, that's really all I got to say, man. And Scott, you personally, if you don't feel that this video um, covered exactly what you need, just hit me up in the comments and I'll create another one. Anyways, cheers, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.